Last night on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Let's see who got it right now and in the fastest time, Toby Moore. Toby. On which grounds would you find the official residence of the Vice President of the United States? I'm nervous to use the 50-50 now. You never know what might happen. I think I'd like to phone a friend. I am going to go with my instinct. I'm going to go with B, U.S. Naval Observatory. You are absolutely right for $32,000. You just won $64,000. You bet it's Wolfgang for $125,000. And now, from New York City, night 12 of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, big boisterous crowd. Welcome to night 12 of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And here's the deal. We have less than a week to go with our show. We want all you people out there who have, think this is so easy, who think you could waltz in here and win a million dollars just like that, well, we want to hear from you. We want you to call that number, qualify, and come on in and show us how smart you are. That's what Toby Moore did last night, and what a night he had. Toby, it's good to see you again. You left here well, knowing that you had won $125,000. How did you feel, and where did you go? Ah, relieved, as I huh? felt. Uh, after, after the show, we went back to the hotel and went not too far from the hotel and had a steak and a cold beer. Just like the good Oklahoman you are. Yes. <laughs> I thought maybe you'd stop and have a plate of Fusilli. <laughs> I uh, was in no mood for, for Fusilli. A steak was what I wanted. Uh -huh. All right, now listen. You won $125,000. You've got three questions to go before you win $1 million. You've got only one lifeline left 50 50. So now, you know, you and I, Toby, may never sit like this again. You know that? So I want you to be confident, aggressive, think clearly. You tell me when you're ready to start this. Anytime you're ready, Regis. Right now? Right now. Let's get it on. Okay, Toby. Are you ready, studio audience? Yeah! Here it is. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Here it is. Which of the following states does not contain part of Yellowstone National Park? Wyoming. Idaho. Utah. Montana. Let's see. It does not contain part of Yellowstone National Park. Okay, let's think about how it looks in the road, Alice. Utah over here. Montana. Idaho. still have that lifeline, and I should remind you that should you miss this, you'll lose 93000 go back down to 32000 Yes, I know. Just need to take a minute here. Yeah, take your time. Okay. Okay, I've drawn the map out in my head. And I'm going to say that C, Utah, does not contain part of Yellowstone National Park. Got it all figured out? As good as it's going to get. Don't want to use the lifeline. No. Final answer? Yes. You're right, it's Utah. $250,000. Very, very excited. Toby is the fourth player to win $250,000. He'd be the only second one if you won the next question, if you got it right, uh, to win a half million dollars on our show. And while we were in commercial break, I said to Toby, if you win it, Toby, tonight may be a steak and two beers. And his wife, Catherine, yelled out, what about Italian? <laughs> we're eating Italian. Catherine, how do you feel right now? Nervous. 
<laughs> I think we all are a little nervous because this is uh, really a terrific moment. So, two questions away. Still have that 50-50 lifeline. Half a million dollars at stake here. If you miss, Toby, you'll be reduced by 218,000, back down to 32,000. Here it comes for $500,000. Let's play. Which of the following characters is not considered a Pokemon? Jigglypuff, Frodo, Squirtle, Pikachu. I gotta use a 50-50 now or he just... All right, fine, sure, we can get that done. Uh, computer, please take away two of the wrong answers, leaving Toby the one wrong answer and one correct one, please. Not considered a Pokemon Jigglypuff or Frodo. Now all the lifelines are gone. Just take your time. That's right. Is your little boy involved in Pokemon yet? Too young. How about you, do you play? No. Neither do and I. It was until very recently I did not even know what a Pokemon was. God, my nephew back in Texas is having a cow right now. A cow? A cow. Sounds painful. <laughs> but I guess that's what you have in Texas, right? That's right. Regis, as much as I'd like to go for the million bucks, I can't walk away. I can't leave $250,000 on the table. I don't feel good enough about this. I'm going to walk away. Oh, my gosh. All right, fine. <laughs> you were a great contestant. You really were. Uh, here is your check for $250,000. And how about a great hand, ladies and everybody? Toby, good luck, pal. I'm That's sorry good. about that Pokemon. It's all right. All right. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. If an emergency happened right now, you can have help at the push of a button with medical... Oh, my gosh! Unbelievable! You know, I know I could hear every kid in the country screaming the answer at their TVs. The correct answer, of course, as we all know, all of us adults, is Frodo. You might remember Frodo from The Hobbit. All right, but right now we've got 10 new contestants ready to go. Who are they tonight? Let's find out. They are Damon Ashburn, Kokomo, Indiana. Susan Parsons, Mansfield, Massachusetts. Al Metz, Englewood, New Jersey. Brian Klaus, Saugus, Massachusetts. John Carpenter, Hampton, Connecticut. Don Mackey, Boston, Massachusetts. Brian Hancock, Charlotte, North Carolina. Tim Riley, Bel Air, Maryland. Luke Down, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And Jim Leach, Springfield, Illinois. All right, contestants, congratulations on getting here this far. Now we're going to find out which one of you will get a chance to play for the $1 million. Here's how it works. In a moment, a question of four answers will appear on your screens. The one who puts those answers in the correct order in the fastest time will be our next player. Audience, we need complete silence here as usual. Thank you very much. Here comes the question. Put these U.S. senators in the geographic order of the state they represent, from west to east. Phil Graham, Daniel Inouye, Ted Kennedy, Diane Feinstein. All right, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting in the West. Daniel Inouye, Diane Feinstein, Bill Graham, Ted Kennedy. All right, let's see who got it right. And in the fastest time, and the winner is... Tim Riley! Hey, Tim! There you go! Congratulations! You're going for a million dollars! I hope so. You're gonna get it? Yeah, yeah you betcha! Yeah. We'll be right back in a minute with Tim Riley. So, Tim Riley joins us now from Bel Air, Ma uh, Maryland, just outside of Baltimore. So many people from that area have made it into the uh, qualifying round here.
And it was your daughter who urged you to call and try in the first place, Actually, right? Actually, both of them, they, you know, we would sit and watch the show when it came on in August, and they would, you know, just keep telling me, you know, I need to call in, I need to call in, and mm -hmm. I kept telling them, there's no way I can get, even get through, let alone qualify and get on. And yeah. Yeah, that was the first wrong answer I got since I'm here, so hopefully it's the last one. Uh, you did just fine. What do you do for a living? I'm a um, computer programmer, basically, for uh -huh. a, a major company. All right, good enough. Well, your wife, Colleen, is in the audience. Colleen, shall we start this? Yes, please. You're ready to go? <laughs> all right, she's all set, Tim. You all set? Uh, yes. All right, right, fine. You know, he called in. He called that free number. He's ready to play now, 15 questions away from winning $1 million. The rules are quite simple. The more questions you get right, the more money you win. Once you reach $1,000 or $32,000, dollars you are guaranteed to leave with at least that much money. And to help you, we've got the three lifelines. Uh, we have 50-50. The computer takes away two of the wrong answers, leaving the correct and an incorrect answer. You can ask the audience. They'll tell you how they feel about it. And finally, you can phone a friend, anybody in the country, AT&T will get for us, to help you out. So if you're ready, Tim Riley, let's go to work. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here we go. Okay, back to $100, and here's how we start. If you churn cream, Tim, which of the following dairy products is produced? Soup, butter, lactate, cheese whiz. The answer is B, butter. You're right, it's butter. $100. $200. How many spaces are there in a typical tic-tac-toe board? Six, seven, eight, nine. There are three rows of three, so the answer is nine, D. Absolutely, there are nine spaces in the tic-tac-toe board. $300 for Tim Riley. What does JAG, the acronym for the military's legal branch, stand for? Judge Advocate General? Jail all GIs? Just ask God, jump and grasp. <clears throat> the answer to that is A, Judge Advocate General. Absolutely right, Judge Advocate General, $300. We go for 500 right now. In the American Civil War, what was the most common color of a Union soldier's uniform? Was it blue, black, green, hot pink? Union was blue, A. Yeah, they wore blue, you're right, for $500. For a thousand. Michael Jordan used to play for what professional basketball team? Toronto Raptors, Milwaukee Bucks, New York Knicks, Chicago Bulls. <clears throat> the answer is D, Chicago Bulls. Of course, and he made history with the Bulls. So you reach that first guaranteed level. You can't leave with less than a thousand. We're going for two thousand. You're ten questions away from a million. Here it is. What rank was Peter Sellers bumbling French policeman Clouseau? Was he a captain, inspector, private, sergeant? He was Inspector Clouseau. B. Inspector Clouseau, final answer? Yes. Absolutely. Inspector Clouseau, what a Amazing, he made it that far, huh? For four thousand dollars, Tim. Actor Clint Eastwood was once the mayor of what seaside California town? Mendocino, Santa Cruz, Carmel, Santa Barbara. The answer is <coughs> C, Carmel. You confident? Yes. All right. Final answer? Yes. Carmel's the right answer. You won $4,000. All right. You're doing just fine here. Here it is for $8,000. What composer of the Stars and Stripes Forever is known as the March King? John Philip Sousa, Mitch Miller, John Williams, Aaron Copland. The answer is A, John Philip Sousa. Final answer? Yes, it is. 
Sure, it was John Philip Sousa, the Hawks team stars and strikes for us. Tim, you, you're doing good. Why don't you just give America a smile? <laughs> Seven questions away from $1 million. We're going for 16000 Check it out, Timmy. What was the name of the plane Charles Lindbergh flew on his first solo nonstop transatlantic flight? Spirit of 76. Spirit of St. Louis. Spirit of America. Spirit of Chicago. The Spirit of St. Louis. B. Confident? Yes, I am. Final answer? Yes. That's the spirit. He got the right plane. Spirit of St. Louis. $16,000. Tim, you're doing great. The $32,000. Here it is. What presidential candidate ran for office with Geraldine Ferraro as his vice presidential running mate? Joseph Biden. Michael Dukakis. Mario Cuomo, Walter Mondale. Well, I don't want to screw this one up. Well, you've got your three lifelines. I think I'd like to ask the audience, Want please. to ask the audience about this one? Sure. All right, audience, Tim needs uh, your help. On your keypads using A, B, C, O, D, please vote now. Well, there you go. 60% feel it was Walter Mondale. 35%, uh, I think it's Michael Dukakis. Well, I thought it was Walter Mondale, too, so I'm going to go with the audience and, and pick D, Walter Mondale. Walter Mondale, D. Final answer? Yes. You're right, it was Walter Mondale. You won $32,000. We're going to come back and you're going to play for $64,000. All right, Tim Riley, there you go. Take a look at this. $32,000 and a lot more where that came from. You know, Tim, uh, just between us, you must be a terrific card player. Did you got one of the great poker faces of all time? Thank you. Nobody knows exactly what you're thinking. Do you agree, Colleen? No, I know what he's thinking. <laughs> it took me 19 years, but I know what he's thinking. <laughs> it took you 19 years, but yes. you know what he's thinking. Yes. Well, that's good. You looking at me, Tim? I'm looking at you. I'm afraid to look at her right now. Because if you're looking at me. All right, my friend, here we go. You've won $32,000. You're going for $64,000. This is kind of like a free question because you're guaranteed to leave here with at least $32,000. You're five questions away from a million dollars. And here we go. Let's play. What everyday product took its name from the founder of antiseptic surgery? Visine, Bactine, Listerine, Bacurachrome. Well, I've only got a 50-50 shot of this, so I think I'd actually like to phone a friend. I'd like to phone Marie. Marie? Yep. Somebody you work with? It's actually my mother. She used to be a nurse. Oh, fun. Oh, good. Well, she should fine. know this. Yes, your mother. All right, our friends at AT&T will get Marie on the line. We'll see if she can help. Hello? Hello, Marie. Yeah. Regis Philbin here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Wonderful. How are you tonight? Well, I'm fine. I've got your son here, Tim. Yeah. He's smiling. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now, Marie, I know you can't see us, but uh, Tim has already won $32,000. He's going for $64,000. He's going to come on the line and read a question to you and four possible answers, <clears throat> and one of them, of course, is the right answer. So the next voice you hear will be Tim's, and Tim, you've got 30 seconds, and they start right now. What everyday product took its name from the founder of antiseptic surgery? Visine, Bactine, Listerine, or Mercurochrome? Listerine, Listerine. You're, Listerine. you're sure of that, right? I'm positive. Okay, so nursing school paid off then, right? Yep. Okay, thanks a lot. Good luck, honey. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now, Tim, your mother loves you. <laughs> I know that makes you happy. Yes, it does. But she gave you what she thinks She said right. it was the right answer. She's my mother. We're going with it. Listerine. Something if your mother didn't give you the right answer? She wouldn't do that to me, just... <laughs> All right, so Timmy, what's the final answer here? Listerine. Listerine, he says. Listerine it is! $64,000! A 
Okay. All right, Tim. Here, I want you to see this because this is what it looks like for 64,000. And we're going on now to 125,000. What state contains the easternmost point in the contiguous United States? Florida, Maine, Massachusetts, North Carolina. The answer is B, Maine. Okay. Got that map in your head? Yes, I do. All right, fine. So the final answer is? B, Maine. He says Maine is the most eastern point in the United States. And it is. You're absolutely right. $125,000. Yeah, Tim. There you go. It's a West Quaddy Head, Maine, if you want to narrow it down. But here it is. Here's what it looks like for a quarter million dollars. What impressionist painter's style of dot-like brush strokes was considered scandalous in his time? Georges Seurat, Claude Monet, Salvador Dali, Edvard Munch. I'd like to use my 50-50, please. Sure. Computer, please take away two of the wrong answers, uh, leaving just one wrong answer and the correct one. Well, of the two, I've only heard of one. Which one was that? Claude Monet. And I'm trying to picture some of his paintings in my head, and I'm drawing a blank. I really have no way to pick between the two of them, so I think I'd like to stop here, please. Sure, no problem at all. You'll leave with $125,000. Uh, but you, you had a feeling it might be Monet. It huh? might be Monet. Shall we take a peek? See Let's what it take is? a peek. Yeah. All right, the final. No, no, it was Seurat. I'm sorry. Uh, you're not wrong at all. You leave with $125,000. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Well, you know, his daughters made him call. His mother helped him out on the phone. His wife was more nervous than he was, I think. But $125,000 is no small amount for a family man like Tim Riley, and we wish him a lot of luck. And incidentally, he's backstage, and yes, he is smiling right now. But now let's find out who will be our next contestant to play for one million dollars. Audience, complete silence, please. Here comes the next fastest finger question. Put the following United Kingdom cities in order from south to the north. Glasgow, Manchester, Aberdeen, Oxford. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting in the south. Oxford, Manchester, Glasgow, Aberdeen. That's the right order. Let's see who got it right. And in the fastest time, just one, Al Metz. Al Metz, how are you? Congratulations. Yeah, you did good. You ready to play? Come on, let's go. All right, so it's Al Metz from Englewood, New Jersey, just across the George Washington Bridge from New York City. Al is something of a wonder boy as a, as a young student. He graduated from uh, Harvard University with honors at the age of 19. And now you're an attorney? I am, that's right. So now you've been married for six years, and your wife Rosemary's up in the audience. Hi, she Rosemary. Is. Hi, Reed. How are you? And you've got some children? I have one five month old boy. Five months? Yeah. Oh, boy. All right, so Al. Um, you know the rules, right? Mm -hmm. Let's play, okay? Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Al Metz. <laughs> First of all, I love the name, Al Metz. <laughs> all right, Al Metz, for $100, take a look at this. Which of these is not found on a standard bicycle? Airbag, spoke, handlebar, chain. Not found on a bicycle, A, airbag. The man from Harvard says airbag. He's right for $100. $200. What item of clothing did Cinderella leave behind at the ball, Al? Purse, glove, glass slipper, driver's license. <laughs> a 
I think the answer is C, glass slipper. That's what she left. Glass slipper, $200 for $300. What body part is commonly referred to as the funny bone? Elbow, chin, foot, head. The answer is A, elbow. You're right, Al. It's the elbow for $300. Proceed now to the $500 question. According to the USDA, which of the following should you eat the least of? Vegetables, breads and cereals, fruits, fats, oils, and sweets. D, fats, oils, and sweets. Al Met says fats, oils, and sweets. He's right for $500. $1,000. What world-famous Pennsylvanian critter pokes his head out of a hole each Groundhog Day. Is it Puxatawney Phil, Redding Rupert, Harrisburg Harry, or Scranton Sammy? Puxatawney Phil. You're right, it's Puxatawney Phil. All right, so Al, you've won $1,000. You're going for $2,000. You've got all your lifelines to check. You're 10 questions away from winning $1 million, so don't go away, Al. We'll be right back to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? You do! <laughs> Al Metz of Englewood, New Jersey, on his way. He's got all his lifelines left. He's going for $2,000. Wife Rosemary up there looking on. All right, you're doing good. You won $1,000. We're going for $2,000. Ready? Let's play. <laughs> Which of the following arcade games was introduced first? Pong? Tetris? Pac-Man, Mortal Kombat. I feel fairly confident that the Pong was introduced first. All right, so what do we have, a final answer here? A final answer of A, Pong. You're right, it was Pong. First one. Atari introduced it back in 1972. All right, here we go, Al, for $4,000. Instead of going to school, where does the main character in Ferris Bueller's Day Off spend his day? Denver, Fort Lauderdale, Milwaukee, Chicago. My, my feeling is Chicago. I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say D, Chicago, and, and hope. Final answer? I hope not, but yes. <laughs> yeah, we're Chicago. $4,000. For $8,000, check it out. How often is the United States population census conducted? Every five years, every 10 years, every 15 years, every 20 years. It has always been a decennial census. I'll go with B, every 10 years. Every 10 years. Yes. Final? Yes. Final. It's every 10 years you've won $8,000. Here it is for $16,000. Which author created the popular children's character, Harry Potter? R.L. Stein, Beverly Cleary, J.K. Rowling, Maurice Sendak. I'm going to rely on the young parents and aunts and uncles in the audience. All right, fine, sure. They'll help you out. Audience, we need a little help here. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Well, there you go. 58% feel it was um, J.K. Rowling, and uh, the next one in line was uh, Beverly Cleary at 24%. Well, I, I trust the audience's wisdom on this. That's what I'm going with. Final answer. They're right, and you're right. You won $16,000. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Thank, Thank you. You didn't study Harry Potter at Harvard, did you? <laughs> he wasn't no, around then. I'm going out to buy the books tomorrow. <laughs> All right, six questions away from a million. One lifeline used. We're going for 32000 here, and here it comes. Which of these journalists was never a regular anchor on the television news program 60 Minutes? Steve Croft, Dan Rather, Walter Cronkite, Meredith Vieira.
I'm, I'm ashamed to say I am not a watcher of the show and kicking myself down for it. Think for a minute. Well, I would prefer not to be in a position of being on my own wits for the last five questions. But the only way to get to them may be with help. I think I will call... I'll call my brother-in-law, Jordan. Jordan? Yes. All right, fine. We'll get Jordan on the line. AT&T will track him down and bring him to us. We'll see if he can help. Hello, Jordan. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Uh, hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And Al Metz is here and he needs your help. Okay. All right, I know you can't see us, but he's won 16,000, going for 32,000. He's going to read you a question and four possible answers. One of them is the right answer, so you'll hear his voice next. And now you've got 30 seconds and they start now. Which, which of these journalists was never a regular anchor on the television news program 60 Minutes? Steve Croft, Dan Rather, Walter Cronkite, Meredith Vieira. Never a regular anchor on 60 Minutes. Never a regular anchor on 60 Minutes. Walter Cronkite. Uh, Al, I tell you the truth, I really don't know, but I would guess Walter Cronkite. Six seconds. Would you like uh, any other thoughts? Meredith Vieira, Steve Meredith Croft. Meredith Vieira, Steve Croft. Uh, Cro Here's my thinking. Let's hear it, Al. <laughs> and feel free to help out. I wish I could. <laughs> Dan Rather, 60 Minutes. I See, I think of Meredith Vieira as being a different network, but I, I, I don't know, as I said. I just don't know. Here's what I figure. Walter Cronkite was already well, well established by the time 60 Minutes came along. So either he let it off to make it a big show, or wasn't involved in it. Where that's leading me to is a guess. Well, I think it was Jordan who said, well, he thought it was Walter Cronkite there before right, he right. ran right. time. And, and I, 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 like, I like the answer. It makes, makes some sense to me. Could be wrong. I won't hold Jordan to it, because I'm, I'm coming to the same thing. But I'm going to say C, Walter Cronkite. Al, you've approached this question from every possible angle. <laughs> uh, so the final answer is Walter Cronkite. My final answer is C, Walter Cronkite. You're right, it was Walter Cronkite. <laughs> Al, you've just won $32,000. When we come back, you're going to try the $64,000. We'll be right back in a moment. All right, Al Metz. Al Metz, pouring it on tonight. You're five <laughs> questions away from $1 million. You're going for $64,000, kind of like a free question in here. Okay. Take a look, Al. What is the official language of Brazil? Portuguese, French, Spanish, English. I have a friend who goes there every year. Keeps saying he's learning it. I don't see evidence of it, but he has Portuguese tapes at least, so I'm going to say A, Portuguese. Is that the end of the story? That is. <laughs> is that your final answer, Al? And it's my final answer. Yeah, you got that figured out right. It's Portuguese. <laughs> One lifeline left going for $125,000, and this is what it looks like. In November 1999, who was named People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive? Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Denzel Washington, Richard Gere. Well, I can't say I have the issue. 
Um, but I seem to recall seeing something mentioned that it was Dean Richard Gear. So that's my final answer, D. Richard Gear. Richard Gear. You got it right. He's the sexiest man alive. That's good. So you've won 125,000, <laughs> quarter million dollars again. All right. Three questions away. If you miss this, you'll be reduced by 93,000. <laughs> Here it is for. $250,000. What is the collective name for a group of leopards? Spot, tribe, leap, troop. $125,000. Got going, one lifeline left. Going for two fifty. dollars I have a feeling, but a 50-50 couldn't help but help. Maybe, maybe enough. Excuse me, Al? We're going to try the 50-50. You want to go for 50-50? Please, okay, please. fine. Computer, uh, please take away two of the wrong answers, leaving just one wrong answer and the correct one. Tribe or leap? A group of leopards. I'm glad I didn't go with my feeling. Mm. Interesting. A leap of leopards just sounds like it can't be right. But somehow a tribe of leopards sounds like it just can't be right. That Say we're wrong? <laughs> no, just that just that I'm I'm all a sea about this. Regis, I, I can see both being right and I can see both being wrong. And in that position, Nick's college education is too important. Um, I'm going to stop at the 125,000. All right, well, that's happened to us uh, two times tonight. Um, but we understand that. <clears throat> would you like to take a guess just to see <laughs> which one would have gotten you the quarter million and which one would have gotten you 32,000? It's been a year since I've seen a group of leopards. <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to say the one that sounds like it can't be right. Leap. You would have been right. Uh, uh. But as it goes, Al, 125000 is a good sum of money. Here it is. Thanks for Thank you very much. Good luck to you, okay? Thanks. I'm on. Well, there you go. That's a half million dollars sitting there backstage. But if we move really fast right now, we've got time for one more fastest finger question, and here it is. Put the following races in order according to their length, from the shortest to the longest. A Diderot dog sled race, Tour de France, London Marathon, Indianapolis 500. And the answer in the correct order. London Marathon. Indianapolis 500. The Iditarod Dog Sled Race. Tour de France. Let's see who got it right in the fastest time. And the winner is John Carpenter. Hey, John. What up there, my man? Way to go. You're doing just terrific. Ready to play? Ready. Come on, let's go. All right, so our contestant is John Carpenter, comes to us from Hamden, Connecticut. Wife Debbie in the audience. Hi, Debbie. How you doing? Hi, Regis. And this should make you a real crowd favorite. John works for the IRS. <laughs> We've never had a contestant booth. <laughs> well, let me make it easier for he works in collection for the IRS. Oh, come on. They're kidding, John. We all love you. I'm taking names. It's all right. Okay, John, you know about the rules. You know about the lifelines. 50-50, phone a friend, ask the audience. It's all there for you. Ready to go? 
ready. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here we go. <laughs> For $100, in the Roadrunner and Coyote cartoons, John, what famous sound does the Roadrunner make? Ping, ping. Beep, beep. Ayuga, ayuga. Varoom, varoom. Beep, beep. B, final answer. Final answer, beep, beep. It's a good one. He did say beep, beep. You're right. $200. Where should choking victims place their hands to indicate to others they need help? Over the eyes, on the knees, around the throat, on the hips. Well, I don't like seeing uh, the word choking about right now. <laughs> but the answer is C around the throat. Never met an IRS guy with a sense of humor. <laughs> around the throat, C, final answer. Final answer. It's exactly right, around the throat, you've got it. Well, there you go, well, you know what that sound means, don't you? It means we're through for tonight, but John will be here tomorrow night, ready to go, and joining him will be 10 new contestants who have flown in from all over the country, and they are Jed French, Sean Fagan, Gabriella Viscoso, Stephen Fox, John Hyman, Chrissy Sanquist, Kelly Redke, Susan Camden, Mike Postido, Sheila O'Grady.